And I want to talk to you over the course of the next five lectures about uh, moduli and degenerations of algebraic curves via tropical geometry. And I won't assume any background on tropical geometry. So in essence, tropical geometry is a very modern degeneration technique, but it has its roots in uh, the sort of philosophy of degenerations, which goes back at least several decades. And the basic idea of degenerations is that, let me talk about it in the case of algebraic curves, which will be the focus of my lectures. So the basic idea, uh, which you may well be familiar with, is that um, even if you want to get information about the behavior of a single smooth curve, it can often be uh, useful to look instead at a family of curves, say parameterized by some uh, some one, uh, one dimensional base. And over, uh, so in the <coughs> limit, uh, this family of curves may uh, acquire some singularities. In other words, uh, in a situation we'll be interested in, the curve may become nodal, and that nodal curve will have a rich combinatorial structure uh, associated to it, basically consisting of the combinatorics of the way the components uh, intersect. And tropical geometry is. Uh, uh, sort of degeneration technique along these lines <coughs> in which the, de uh, the degenerate object uh, becomes completely combinatorial and yet encodes in, uh, interesting information about the original family of curves you started with. So that's the basic philosophy. And um, today what I want to do is to start at the very beginning of the uh, theory of tropical curves, if you'll permit me, uh, which is to say that I want to start with the theory of embedded tropicalizations, tropicalizations of, say, a plane algebraic curve. <coughs> okay. So let me start. So here's the setting. So K is going to denote a field. And K star will, as usual, denote the non-zero elements of that field. And the setting of tropical geometry is uh, over non-Archimedean fields. So let me define that. So a non-Archimedean valuation uh, on K is a map. I'll call it V for valuation, and it's a map from the non-zero elements of K into the real numbers, uh, such that uh, two properties. So first, the valuation of the product is the sum of the valuations uh, and second, uh, the valuation of the sum is at least the minimum of the valuations. So this is for all elements A and B. OK. And uh, we'll set, it's, it's typical to extend the valuation by setting the valuation of 0 to be positive infinity. OK, so for example, uh, if you're inclined towards number theory, you'll immediately think of, for example, the p-adic numbers, the completion of Q with respect to uh, the p-adic valuation for any prime p. Another example that's a favorite of tropical geometers is uh, the field of Laurent series and its algebraic closure. So let me recall that we have uh, the field of Laurent series and a single variable t. And uh, this consists of, uh, right, so these, okay, let me, let me define the valuation. So we say that the valuation of the sum of a sub i t to the i here i is in z, is uh, the minimum exponent with non-zero coefficient. So this is the minimum i such that a i is non-zero. So this is the field of Laurent series. And it's often typical in tropical geometry to consider its algebraic closure, the field of Puiseux series. So explicitly, uh, yeah. So this is 
the field of, this is the algebraic closure of the Laurent series, which uh, consists of a uh, power series uh, in with bounded denominators, uh, exponents in the, sorry, bounded denominator fractions in the exponents. Okay, so let me write that. And a final example is just the complex numbers, or indeed any field, with the trivial valuation. So this is the, uh, the valuation that sends everything to zero. Okay, so you can check that that also satisfies the, uh, the definitions of evaluation. And this may sound like a silly example to consider, but in fact it's very useful uh, for providing a, a unified theory of tropicalization that can occur over this trivially valued uh, setting as well. Okay, now already you can sort of get a sense, get a glimpse for why tropical geometers might be interested in algebraic objects, for example, algebraic curves defined over such fields. Namely, if I give you like a curve x over this field, well, it's a single curve over a field on the one hand, but you can really think of it as a family of curves, an infinitesimal family over an infinitesimal uh, neighborhood or a punctured disk uh, in the complex plane. And so the idea of tropical geometry will be to associate some combinatorial data to the special fiber when one fills in over t equals zero this family according to the properness of the moduli space of curves. So we'll get there. But today, uh, again, I'm going to stick to the sort of the elementary case which parallels the development of algebraic geometry going back centuries when the only curves that were considered to start with were, were given by equations in, in the, you know, equations defining a curve in the plane. All right, so, uh, okay, so definition. So again, if K is a valued field, a non-Archimedean valued field, then uh, a valued extension of k is a field extension, L over k. Um, so this is a field extension in which the structure of the valuation is compatible with the extension. So uh, such that uh, the valuation, so a field extension uh, with L a valued field also, such that uh, the extension is compatible with the valuation. Let me just write it in words. So literally the valuation on L extends that uh, on K. Okay, and now let me define the tropicalization of a subvariety of the algebraic torus. So again, we fix a non-Archimedean field K And let me let x be a subvariety of the algebraic torus. So uh, specifically, I'll think in explicitly in coordinates, and I'll give it to you as an ideal uh, uh, in the Laurent polynomial ring. So uh, given given by an ideal. in this ring. Okay, so then we define the tropicalization, and I'll emphasize that this is the so-called embedded case, whereas soon we'll pass to considering the, the abstract case, the intrinsic case. So the embedded tropicalization uh, is, it is the following subset of Rn consisting of the coordinate-wise valuations of all points in the variety, specifically, so this is the coordinate-wise valuation for all L-valued points, where L is any uh, valued field extension. 
of k. And so this is a subset of uh, Rn. For the moment, it's just a subset. Is it clear? OK. So I'm actually defining the tropicalization of arbitrary subvarieties of, of uh, Maybe you want yeah. to take the I don't actually. Uh, so yes. Um, okay. Let me absolutely. Thanks for your remark. Let me make. Let me respond to your remark. Absolutely. So uh, in particular, if um, K is itself algebraically closed and the valuation is non-trivial. Then, uh, as Christian points out, uh, the tropicalization can be regarded as the closure in the usual Euclidean topology of Rn of the subset uh, just of uh, points. So again, the coordinate-wise valuation of all k-valued points uh, of, of x. Yes, so yeah, this is a very typical way to define the tropicalization. And uh, the connection is uh, that if you allow arbitrary valued extensions, then you can imagine huge valued extensions, in particular ones where the, uh, uh, the image of the valuation map is surjective onto the reals. Yes, but this is a good way to think about it to start with. OK, let's do an example. The first example, a line in the plane. So let's take our line, x plus y minus 1, and consider its variety. <laughs> and let's compute the tropicalization of, uh, of this variety. So it should be some subset of R2. Alright, so suppose I do have a point of this variety. So if so this is a variety inside, I should say, uh, the algebraic torus GM2. Okay. So suppose I have such a point. I claim that there's an elementary necessary condition that its valuations, V of X and V of Y, must satisfy. Namely, I claim that the minimum of the valuation of x, the valuation of y, and the valuation of 1, the minimum of these three real numbers must occur at least twice. And note, of course, that the valuation of 1 is 0. Okay. This is simply because if x plus y minus 1 equals 0, then uh, by the definition of valuations, we must have the minimum occurring twice. Otherwise, the minimum will be uh, the unique smallest uh, non-infinity. Right? Otherwise, the minimum will be the unique smallest number. And in particular, uh, it won't be the valuation of 0. Does that make sense? So over the field of power series, for instance, you need cancellation amongst the lowest terms. OK, so this shows us that uh, we have at least the following containment. Uh, it's, so the tropicalization is contained in uh, the set, let me call it uh, W comma Z in R2 such that the minimum of w, z, and 0 occurs at least twice. Is that OK? All right, and let me draw this, this right-hand side set. It is a polyhedral subset of Rn, which you can certainly work out. So it consists of three infinite rays from the origin 
uh, inside R2. And in fact, we have a theorem, Kapranov's theorem, that states that this inequality, this, this inclusion of subsets, is always an equality of, of sets. So I'll state this theorem in the case of plain curves, but it holds uh, word for word for arbitrary hypersurfaces. So here's the theorem, um, which implies equality above. So let me... Uh, write out the general form of a polynomial, a Laurent polynomial. So it has terms of the form Cij, for Ij some point in the lattice, x to the i, y to the j. And then uh, the theorem is that uh, the tropical variety associated to the variety of F is those points uh, Z, W in R2, such that the minimum over all terms of the valuation of Cij plus uh, Ix So plus I, uh, sorry, I Z plus uh, J W occurs at least twice. So there's repetition amongst uh, the smallest, uh, the smallest occurring number here. So this implies equality in our naive consideration showing this uh, containment. Is it clear? OK. So just as an aside, this, uh, in this theorem, you can maybe see uh, the source of the commonly uttered slogan that tropical geometry is the algebraic geometry over the min plus semi-ring. So uh, let me write that. So this is the semi-ring uh, consisting of the real numbers along with positive infinity, say. An addition operation, which is minimum, and a multiplication operation, which is the classical addition. As you can see, this here is the so-called uh, tropicalization term by term of the polynomial F. So this is the sum over ij uh, times Ah, thank you. OK, we'll go with white. OK. So this is the sum over ij of uh, vcij times, tropical times, uh, uh, z to the power of i, tropically, times uh, w to the power of j. So in this sense, we're studying the geometry over the min plus semi-ring with addition replaced by the minimum and multiplication replaced by the classical addition. OK. All right, so uh, this theorem allows us to uh, calculate using uh, basic polyhedral combinatorics, uh, tropical uh, plane curves. So maybe let me do one example. OK. So let me do an example of a plane quartic curve over uh, uh, the field of uh, Laurent series, say. So here is my field. 
and let me give the following plane coordinate curve. Uh, so it has this equation explicitly. It's a homogeneous equation of degree four and three variables. Okay, so let me tell you uh, a combinatorial recipe for drawing the polyhedral subset of R2 arising as the tropicalization of X. So to compute prop X is a matter of elementary polyhedral geometry. So um, I'll tell the story to you in this example, but I won't sort of write it out in generality. You can see uh, the references in my notes for this. So the first thing to do is to draw the Newton polygon of the uh, dehomogenization. So let's dehomogenize just for convenience and draw the Newton polygon of the two variable uh, polynomial that results. So it's a polynomial in x comma y and what I'm drawing is the convex hull in R2 of the exponent vectors appearing in that polynomial. So there are exponent vectors uh, 0, 4, 0, 0, and 4, 0. Is that right? Yeah, OK. So here is a picture of the Newton polygon of f with z equals 1 for convenience. And here's the recipe. So um, first you associate to each lattice point in the Newton polygon. Let me try this color. The valuation of the corresponding coefficient. So here I have uh, valuations 1 on each of the uh, vertices of this triangle. And I have valuations 0 otherwise, in, sorry, in the central triangle. And I have the infinite valuations uh, elsewhere, which won't affect the picture. OK. So this is, uh, let me, uh, right, so we lift. So you think about these uh, orange numbers as giving you a recipe for lifting into uh, the n plus first dimension uh, these lattice points. So lift uh, ij to valuation of cij. And then, so, okay, so can you imagine this? So I've lifted each of these three points uh, one unit of distance outside of the board. And then you can imagine that the lifted points form some, they have some convex hull now in R3. And if you view that convex hull from uh, behind the blackboard, what you'll see is an induced regular polyhedral subdivision, an induced subdivision of the triangle itself. And so I'll draw it so that we can make sure that our intuitions coincide. So this is the induced subdivision obtained from the uh, yellow uh, lifted uh, points. Is that clear? OK. Yeah? OK, so then I claim, and this is a matter of uh, uh, like polyhedral combinatorics, I claim that uh, the tropicalization is uh, dual to this lift this uh, subdivision. And to tell you what dual means, I'm just going to do it in this example. And please let me know if it's not clear. So the tropicalization has a zero cell for every two cell and a one cell, uh, for uh, so an edge corresponding to every edge. And it looks like this. Um, OK, so uh, let me draw it there and then, and then do it. OK, so the tropicalization is almost going to be this picture. But unfortunately, because of a um, convention <laughs> issue, I'll have to negate the whole picture. So let me draw now that picture rotated by 180 degrees. <coughs> Uh, 
and that's what we get. And uh, I haven't explained it, but there's a very a completely elementary way to read off the exact coordinates of, of these vertices just from the equation of x. In fact, just the valuations will suffice. Okay, so here's a picture of trough x. So if you want, you can run this, uh, this procedure for our original line and make sure that you really get out the tropical line that we discussed. Okay. Okay, so these objects are tropical plane curves. Now, in fact, at the moment, I've treated them only as uh, subsets of Rn, but there's a lot more to be said, which I won't emphasize in these lectures. For example, these subsets are polyhedral, and they come with uh, multiplicities, so integer multiplicities intrinsically associated, well, associated to each of these edges. And those multiplicities um, uh, satisfy a certain sort of zero tension condition around each vertex. And there's a lot more to be said about this whole story. But this is an example of a tropical plane curve in any case. Are there any questions? How do you define the jewel? Yes, uh, I have suppressed the, the um, I've suppressed the, uh, the formal definition. So let me say it in words, at least. Uh, the dual is an inclusion reversing uh, sort of procedure. And the edges of the dual are literally orthogonal to the edges of the primal. Um, and uh, you know, let me try to say it in, in a different way. Again, not formally, but intuitively. So remember that the valuations on each of the lattice points induced some polyhedral uh, subset, <coughs> some, namely the convex hull of the lifted points. Now you can imagine that uh, an affine transformation, various affine transformations of that convex hull, so you have to think of some polytope out here sitting above the triangle, different affine transformations have the property that either the lowest slice in terms of height of the blackboard, the lowest slice is a single point, or it consists of more than one point. And what I'm drawing here is the space of affine transformations that, can, that, uh, that, that transforms this polytope into one where the lowest slice is more than one point. So you can imagine that the, when the lowest slice is just this triangle, that corresponds to this vertex, and so on. And that should also give you the, uh, in the intuitive connection to this, uh, this definition. It's all of the, um, well, yeah, so it's all the affine transformations, Z comma W, so to speak, that give you uh, the minimum occurring at least twice. Okay, but for the details, you'll have to see the references. So uh, this, this stuff, um, uh, the, my main reference is the, the textbook by McLagan and Sternfels. Okay, any other questions? Thanks for asking. Uh, yeah? Can you see the parameter anywhere in this picture? <coughs> Sorry? Uh, not, I mean, not directly. So T is giving us the valuations here. So like I wrote one on the lattice point zero four because uh, the coefficient of y to the fourth has valuation one. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. Okay, but in particular, uh, if I give you some other polynomial who's who's such that the valuations of the coefficients are all the same as this one, then the tropicalization looks just the same. Thanks. Any, anything else? So oh, yeah. I can just make a remark. Yeah. That give, giving a tropical curve is basically the same thing as giving an integral uh, subdivision of the triangle, right? Of the big triangle. Almost, almost. almost. Yes. So uh, is with the data. With yeah. Subdivision this function, right? This function which gives uh, the polyhedron, right? Exactly, exactly. So I think inherent in your comment is that not all polyhedral subdivisions of, say, that triangle arise as uh, the induced subdivision from heights. So uh, since you made that remark, I can't resist drawing a picture, which I ho can hopefully get right. Um,
So not all, this is a remark, not all uh, uh, polyhedral subdivisions are quote unquote induced by heights in this way. This is called regular subdivisions, usually. So uh, let me try to draw an example, if I can get this right. OK, so here is one. Um, OK, so this is a further subdivision of that picture, which I claim cannot be induced uh, simply by taking lifts of the lattice points, looking at the convex hull above, and looking at the induced subdivision by uh, viewing the whole picture from minus infinity. So what is the data of a tropical curve in the plane? Well, yeah, you can see it from this combinatorial data. It's uh, uh, Well, yeah, OK, I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't uh, go over this point too much. I will mention that the same procedure uh, is not quite enough to uh, study arbitrary tropical varieties. So this is a story that works well for tropical hypersurfaces, but for arbitrary varieties, just as in classical algebraic geometry, things become a little more complicated um, in terms of even just computing these things. So they're, they're, em they're definitely computable. OK, so I'll refer you to the references again for that. OK, let me go on then. Uh, was that a uh, OK, great. <laughs> OK, so at this point, I cannot resist bringing into the picture the notion of Berkovich analytifications, because they really tie together this story very well. And it will come up again and again, in fact, in the material that we're going to develop. And I'll do it in a hopefully elementary way, which is not easy. OK, so, um, so let's do a crash course on analytifications and the story is going to go like this. Associated to some, say, finite type scheme over a field, there is an analytification in the sense of Berkovich, which is some new space. It is, for the moment, just a topological space, though it comes with some like ring structure on it. But for the moment, it's a topological space that includes the uh, original space in it um, and has the property that uh, uh, somehow, by adding lots and lots of points, one can recover some of the analytic feel for doing geometry over non-Archimedean fields. OK, so now let me define it. And the definition will naturally take place over now a complete valued field. So let k be a complete. So let me say what that is. So it's a valued field, which is complete uh, with respect to uh, its uh, uh, non-Archimedean norm. Which I'll now recall. So the norm of an element is defined to be, say, the exponent, the exponential of its valuation. And you can check that this satisfies the, uh, the requirements for being a non-Archimedean norm. And so with respect to this norm, one can ask whether the field is complete or not. And this is what I mean by a complete valued field. So for example, um, QP is certainly complete by definition. Any trivial valued, uh, trivially valued field is definitely complete. And the Puiso series are not complete, actually, but one can take its completion <laughs> and for theoretical purposes, that can be useful. OK, so now let me let. Uh, X be a finite type scheme over uh, K. And I will define now the analytification. And for this entire time, I'll only treat it as a topological space. So 
the analytification in the sense of Berkovich. Uh, denoted Xn has points. Yes. Is that right? Uh, for example, plus infinite should be, should be <laughs> zero. Uh, good point. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah, so like 50% of the tropical geometry community takes max instead of min and plus instead of minus, and so there's, it's unfortunate. So uh, thanks for making sure that my conventions are uh, compatible. Okay, so the Berkovich analytification. So let me try to give you uh, the quickest way I know to describe what are the points of the analytification. So it has points uh, in bijection width. Uh, maps from a field, so maps spec L to X. So where L is a valued field extension of K. Modulo, modulo further valued field extensions of K. So what I mean is uh, modulo identifying commuting triangles of this kind uh, where so this is identified, where L prime over L <coughs> is a further valued field extension. So that is a way to describe uh, the points of the analytification. And it actually should not sound too strange in comparison with the usual situation for uh, just schemes over a field K. So let me just write the following remark, which is uh, some, uh, maybe a rephrasing of something you already know. So compare this to the situation where the points of like uh, just, just now a scheme, X over K, can be named by giving a map spec L to X for L just any field extension. Uh, modulo, again, further field extensions. Is it okay? So this is a the valued uh, uh, corresponding definition. So this is a, a way of describing the points of the analytification, which will be, I think, quite useful when we're thinking about X itself as some kind of <coughs> moduli space. Then it's easy to describe what the points of the moduli space are. They'll correspond to, you know, whatever the functor represents and so forth. So we'll get there, but soon enough, we'll be interested in analytifying the moduli space of curves. And we'll see all of this, um, I don't know if I'll do it explicitly in that language, but we'll see that in the form of abstract tropicalization of curves. okay, so uh, I should have uh, I should say that the topology on Xn is defined to be, so it's uh, uh, it's taken to be the coarsest topology, so the one with the fewest open sets, such that uh, the map, which I'll, okay, such that for all, sorry, I skipped a step. So let me, for the moment, assume that x is affine. So say x equals spec a, 
is an affine scheme of finite type over k. And let's let nu sub f uh, for some element in f, uh, some element f in a. Let's let nu sub f be the map so far of sets from the analytification to R, uh, given by taking a point of the analytification, which, as we indicated, can be given in this form, and sending it to the valuation in the field L of P upper sharp of uh, F. So here, uh, P upper sharp is the corresponding map uh, uh, of A to L, of rings. OK, so I am now going to define the topology on Xn by requiring that each of these uh, maps be continuous. Uh, so it's the coarsest topology, such that each of these maps is continuous. Uh, for all f. And now for the general case in which x may or may not be affine, you simply analytify uh, piece by piece. So you cover it with affines, you analytify everything separately, you glue it up, and you take the corresponding topology that we just indicated. So with all of that in hand, let me just go back and redefine embedded tropicalizations. So definition, uh, again, of uh, embedded tropicalizations. So again, let me suppose that x is explicitly given to me uh, as a subvariety of the algebraic torus by an ideal uh, i. Then we define prop x to be uh, the image of uh, the analytification xn under, um, right, so under the map xn to rn, sending a point p interpreted in the way I'm doing it, interpreted as a map from spec L into uh, x to new sub x1 of p up through new sub xn of p. <coughs> and that's it. And this is, by the way, this is a continuous map by definition of the topology on the analytification. OK, so this is a sort of more intrinsic way of, uh, I don't know, it's, it's a maybe more natural way of defining the tropicalization. Instead of going over all valued field extensions of k, I'm actually just building that into a bigger set than x that consists of um, points over all valued field extensions. And this is useful in a way, um, well, in many ways, uh, basically because uh, the theory of Berkovich, along with others, shows that there are sort of, uh, right, so properties of xn can be derived from properties of x. For example, we know that um, if x is connected, then by the work of Berkovich, we know that xn is connected as a topological space. And that would imply that the tropicalization is also connected. Uh, uh, from, this, from this interpretation. So it's nice to have the sort of analytic geometry coming back into the picture, even though we're working over non-Archimedean fields. Um, so you might say that Berkovich analytifications provide a sort of nice way of understanding tropicalizations. And in fact, I'll remark that the reverse is also true. Namely, 
uh, you can think of tropicalizations as a way to understand a much more complicated space that's generally hard to sort of explicitly get a picture of by taking so-called finite snapshots of it uh, via a collection of functions such as this. And that's a very nice story, uh, which I think will not be the focus of these lectures. In these lectures, I'm hoping to march onwards from uh, having now discussed a bit of tropical plane curves. Uh, I'm hoping to now jump forward like a century or several centuries and discuss the tropicalization in the abstract sense, starting with just you know, curves as uh, smooth, proper, connected schemes of dimension one over a field K, and getting out some abstract tropicalization, which will be um, some combinatorial gadget associated to that data. Uh, any questions or comments before I do that? So yeah. What is the fiber of this map? From what are the fibers of this map? So in other yeah. Words, like of like <coughs> this map, you mean? Yes. Yes. So in they're very words, complicated. Yeah. In other words, can one understand this in more in the finite, in finite terms, rather than taking all the the uh, right, so these fibers are like enormous, as you might imagine. Right. So in some sense, this tropicalization is a way of, in, I mean, in my unofficial opinion, it's a way of uh, controlling some of that uh, infinite nature. So, uh, so for example, the tropicalization that we saw uh, in this case turns out to be uh, uh, well, okay, so the fiber over a single point will be some like very infinite real tree, basically, which has retracted onto that point under the tropicalization. So, um, uh, you know, let me try to go on and then see if some of this will be uh, addressed at least implicitly in my further lectures, in which one might associate to the abstract curve defining <coughs> the uh, tropical plane curve we discussed, a picture that looks somewhat like this. Actually, okay, uh, you know what, we can, uh, so <laughs> let me make a remark in passing. So our previous example, which was x being the variety of x squared yz plus xyz squared z plus xyz squared plus t times some other stuff. Okay, so what was this example? I gave it to you as a plane curve, at least the intersection of a plane curve with some torus whose tropicalization looks somewhat like this, right? So there's some combinatorial structure to this tropicalization. There are four vertices and six edges, and the edges connect the pairs of vertices. Now let's get a preview for what we're gonna see by considering X to tell us of a, a family occurs over a punctured disk when T is not zero. And in fact, by just setting T equals zero, a curve, a complex curve, nodal now, uh, when t equals zero. So let's note, when t equals zero, we have that uh, x is given by, so yeah, uh, let me just write it this way for the moment. It's the variety of uh, four lines intersecting transversely in the plane. So this is a picture of a variety inside the complex plane. And you can see that its dual graph, which I will describe in great detail over the next lecture, is here visible in the tropicalization. So there's some way in which the analytification of a curve remembers some intrinsic combinatorial data about uh, the curve in the special fiber of an appropriately completed family. And that's the uh, connection that I'm going to explore a lot in the next lecture. Okay. Yeah, are there uh, other questions or comments? Okay, do I go till 10.30? Is it a full hour? Okay, great.
So in fact, let me just continue this train of thought uh, in the form of an example that previews the definitions that I will start giving today and continue next time, in which, again, one takes a, a family of curves over a punctured disk, if you will, completes that over the puncture according to the properness of the moduli space of curves, and associates combinatorial data to the special fiber. So let me give, give this as the following example. So, and, and sorry, so again, this example is going to uh, illustrate all the definitions that, uh, that I'll give of abstract tropicalization of curves. So suppose I have, uh, again, over um, maybe the Puiseux series or even its completion, Suppose I have a curve uh, which is given as um, the variety of x times y equals t to the l times z squared. So this is just a complex plane curve. Sorry, not a complex curve. It is a plane curve over k. So here uh, l is a positive number. Sorry. Okay, so we think of this as follows. So x defines, um, uh, uh, so x is a variety over k. Now recall that k has a valuation ring. So this is not related to the example, this is completely general. So let's just recall that r is the valuation, can be uh, the valuation ring. Uh, So recall that this is the ring of elements with a non-negative valuation. And this valuation ring is a local ring, as usual, uh, with unique maximal ideal given by um, the points of positive valuation. All right, so geometrically, spec R, of course, is two points, which I'll draw somewhat disingenuously <coughs> is in this way. So we have the generic point corresponding to the zero ideal and the special point corresponding to the maximal ideal. And at the moment, so of course, the generic point, so if I have a, f a variety x over k, then this gives me a variety just over the generic point. And this is a plane conic in this case. And you can see that the equation in, this, in my example now defines, in fact, a family over, uh, so a family script x over r, uh, just by setting t equals 0 in this case. And that gives a special fiber of the family which consists of two rational curves meeting in a node, x times y equals zero. So this family will qualify as a, uh, well, okay, let me, let me go on. So this is not just like any old family, but it has some nice properties. Now let me, uh, to make things agree with my next uh, lecture, let me equip my curve, my plane conic curve, with four points. So this is a continuation of my example. So let's let two of my points be uh, plus or minus t to the l, plus or minus 1 and 1, and p3 and p4 be plus or minus 1, plus or minus uh, t to the l and 1. OK, so these are four points on the conic. And you can take their horizontal closures in the family x, script x. But I've drawn here to obtain their specializations onto the special fiber as actual <laughs> regular points of the special fiber. Okay. 
So the abstract tropicalization. Uh, oh, let me go back and remark that this is an example of a, um, a stable, like a, I don't know how to call this, uh, let's just say a family of stable curves in M04 bar. And the abstract tropicalization, which I will define next time, and I'm just previewing at the moment. So I'll usually not say abstract, but I'm saying it just now to emphasize the distinction and the connections with the previous examples, so the previous uh, discussion of embedded tropicalizations. So this abstract tropicalization of uh, X can be read off uh, from the special fiber. It's as follows. So it's the dual graph of the special fiber, which consists of a vertex for every irreducible component and an edge for every node between them. And it has four marked points, which I'll draw as little legs or infinite rays, as you prefer, on the vertices. And crucially, the length, there's a length associated with this edge, and that length is given as L in this example. Okay, so um, okay, so I guess I'll leave it as a goal for the next lecture to define exactly what we mean by this uh, tropicalization in the abstract sense. And then over the course of the following lectures, we'll try to promote this correspondence into a notion of a tropical moduli space of curves, parameterizing objects a bit like this, and give an uh, indication of how the tropical moduli space of curves uh, interacts with the classical moduli space of curves and its Deline-Mumford compactification. Okay, but I'll end there for now. Thanks. <laughs>